Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Victoria here at Radiant Moon Tarot. Today we are having a look and seeing what's coming in for May of 2023 for all of you singles out there looking for new love. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to you. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm always grateful for every single one of you. So if you are currently in a romantic relationship of some kind or a temporary separation from your person, please check out the love readings that are already all posted for you and you will find your messages over there. Singles, this video will cover Cancer, Leo and Virgo. Uh, the timestamps will all be down below. If you're looking for any other sign, there will be separate readings just for those. Uh, there's three on each one. Uh, let's just say Mercury Retrograde is making some upload times incredibly long. So we're just going to do it a little bit of a consolidated way this time around. The month of May, we do start out, in case you didn't already know, with Mercury Retrograde in the sign of Taurus. So Mercury Retrograde is, whenever we have a retrograde, it's always that step back, right? Sometimes we revisit things. Sometimes we um, think about things again, like we're like, oh, okay, well, I thought that I wanted this, but you know what? Maybe when I think about it and again, maybe I don't, maybe this is what I'm really looking for. So you might be finding yourself a little bit reflective at this time, but in the Taurus energy, there may be some money things and career things that come up that may uh, cause love to take just a little bit of a backseat, at least until about the middle of the month. Um, this is a time to be a little bit cautious with your money, um, you know, especially that retrograde energy, right? We don't want to make any sudden moves or anything like that. And just be a little bit aware um, that because of some other energies, there may be an opportunity for scammers to be about. So just be a little bit careful if you're online doing any kind of activity, um, including looking for love, right? Because, you know, the internet can be a little bit of illusion and not everything is as it seems. So just be a little bit more cautious with that and communication. Um, and technology because things can go a little bit sideways um, in the retrograde. But the big thing that we do have this month, um, it's a very intense, you're probably already feeling it, uh, you'll feel it throughout the month, is the lunar eclipse in Scorpio. This happens on the 5th of May, coincides with Cinco de Mayo. So if you're going out partying or anything like that, or if you do celebrate that day, um, there is a possibility of going overboard a little bit. So just watch that um, because the eclipse energies do tend to be quite intense and uh, emotionally charged. Okay, but this particular eclipse here is a wonderful time to purge. Purge out any resistance or blocks on your path to finding love whatsoever. Pending, um, uh, purging, excuse me, purging out any fears and anxieties and doubts or negative vibes right? And we all, we do sometimes stand in our own way um, in our quest for love, right? We, one day we're like all positive and the next day I'm never going to find love. I'm never going to do this, never going to. And then when we get in that particular energy, boom, we have our blocks back again. So with this um, particular full moon being in Scorpio, this is a massive cleansing and purging and you may even have old wounds that come back up to the surface a little bit in weird ways, um, especially via dreams or maybe a song on the radio or hey, uh, with retrograde plus the eclipse energy being that full moon, uh, possibly even somebody coming back. Not that we want that, okay, but sometimes that can happen. Um, but I feel like for the majority of people, it's like no, because this is a south node eclipse as well, and this is all about what you're leaving behind for good, okay? So I feel that if somebody does come back, unless it's something you've manifested and something that you really do want, um, I feel that this is more of an opportunity to get that final piece of closure and to walk away and never look back again. So having said all of that, you may also um, be making some very firm, clear decisions about love and then looking to the future. And we've got a nice new moon um, in the sign of Taurus uh, towards the end of the month. I think it's around the 19th, 19th or 20th, forget which day. Um, anyways, but that is a wonderful time to set some intentions for new love entering your life. And remember to always um, set those intentions from a place of positivity and abundance. So let's get right into your readings here for the month ahead and see what's coming out for you guys. Once again, this particular video will be for Cancer, 
Leo, and Virgo. All of your timestamps are going to be in the description box and the comment section down below to make it easier to find for you guys. And let's get right into it and see what's up. If you do find that you enjoy your readings, please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment in the box down below, and uh, stay positive, my friends. All right, let's get right into Cancers. Cancer, hello. Let's get right into your reading for the month ahead and see what we have coming out for you, what messages Spirit has for you. And we're also going to see um, what potential people may be coming in for you guys. Messages for Cancer, please. We have patience. Hmm. Well, I feel patience is very much a virtue. Some of you have been very patient for quite some time. And if that's the case, uh, then you might have some shifting energy that's coming in here for you for the better. Okay. For others of you, you know, a little bit patience, a little bit more patience may absolutely be needed for you. However, the patience card, you... You are able to let the universal energy of transformation move according to its own loving rhythm. It's not always easy to do, right? Sometimes timing is everything. And don't forget, you know, um, it's one thing if we're trying to manifest things into our own personal lives, um, things like jobs and money and all that kind of stuff. But when we're manifesting love, not only do you need to be ready but the universe also needs to make sure that the other person is also ready. And you, so you never know really quite what stage your person that is being guided and directed towards you is at. And of course, spirit always wants to make sure that this person is ready for the love that you have to give. So for some of you, you've been patient for a long time and you may have some wonderful um, surprises coming in here in the month of May. And for others of you, a little bit more patience is required. Stay open, stay receptive, stay in the flow. Try not to get down that negative Nelly train. Okay, and if you do find yourself getting all um, wrapped up in knots and mad and impatient, okay, take that step back, right? Because this is a perfect opportunity um, right now to release all of that resistance. We also have forgiveness coming in. Now, this is a triggering word for a lot of people. So if you are triggered by the word forgiveness, there's something there. Okay, and this full moon, this eclipse will help you with that. Okay. Forgiveness, you are now able to activate the power of love in order to release past hurts. We always have memories from the past. We always have experiences and we can turn those into knowledge and wisdom. Forgiveness does never condone anything that anyone else has done. Forgiveness is giving yourself the power to no longer let past energies affect you going forward. You keep the memories you keep the experience because you need the wisdom, but we let go of the energy. So this is an empowering energy. Forgiveness is also about forgiving yourself. We ta always talk about forgiving other people or letting things go, right? That kind of thing. But we forget about numero uno and we forget about forgiving yourself because as humans, right? Part of our wonderful aspects, we do tend to harbor guilt or shame um, or we blame ourselves for the actions of others because, oh my God, there must be something wrong with me. There must be something that I've done. And maybe there hasn't been anything that you've done, but yet there is that blame game there anyway. So have a look within because forgiveness of self is the most important thing for you as well. But spirit's trying to free you up. Okay, we also have harmony coming in here. You are able to feel a loving, balanced connection with everything. Wonderful. The energy of harmony and balance is activated for you in the month ahead. So we all need a little bit of balance in our lives. When things come together in balance and harmony, we feel good. We feel centered. We feel grounded. And we feel like we're very much in, on the top of our game. So let's have a look and see what you are releasing. We have the judgment card. Well, there's a release. <laughs> the judgment card is actually bringing in forgiveness and healing for you. Um, the judgment card is helping you to see what has been hidden, what has been in the shadows that needs to be examined, that needs clarity, that you need to bring to the light. When we bring things to the light, we can address these things. We can deal with these things, and then we can make a final judgment, a final decision. Do I let go of this energy? Do I close the chapter, close the door, free myself up, 
and move forward? Do I forgive? Forgive so I can heal and that so I can be empowered going forward. Sometimes the letting go and the forgiveness goes hand in hand. Sometimes we can get second chances with the judgment card. I feel for the majority of people right now um, in the energy that we're in, unless there's been something that has been like external circumstances or something that has taken someone away from you in the past, um, like maybe just um, a missed connection, maybe a relationship that didn't quite get off the ground, even though there was a lot of potential there. Sometimes we have those things and it's just that people are sometimes at a different place in their life. Um, if there is a past romantic relationship, um, I feel here that it would probably only be, you would probably only be willing to accept that back and give a second chance if both you and your person have done the work and have gotten themselves to a good place. Um, so because otherwise the same things that were previously an issue in the relationship are still going to be there. So for some of you, you may have a second chance that's coming, but we've got to let go of expectations. We've got to let go of those negative energies, the fears, the blocks, the doubts. Okay. And then we need to embrace our way forward and trust the universe here. Archangel Michael is very much associated with that judgment card, giving you power, strength, and using that sword to cut away anything negative and to heal. The Temperance card is the energy coming towards you in the month ahead. And the Temperance card is Sagittarian energy, but it is also an energy of patience, moderation, balance, harmony, and healing. Everything in moderation when we do get the Temperance card out, but it's a very calm, very in, very um, forgiving kind of energy. Big, big reminders here from Spirit about letting things go. When we do get the temperance card, we're very calm. We feel grounded. We feel centered. We feel like, you know what? I'm allowing things to happen as they're meant to happen. I know when I need to take action because I am a part of this process and I am manifesting things in my world, right? It's because of the connection with the universe, with spirit that you are able to um, manifest something into your world and have that blossom in a wonderful way. But again, everything in moderation, one step at a time, one day at a time. When we rush things and we force something into resistance or into existence, right? We do create this friction energy and we don't want that. We want the nice calm vibes, right? We want everything to happen exactly when it's supposed to happen. So I feel here you've got a lot of spiritual um, guidance and help. Your spiritual soul tribe is very much lifting you up, protecting you and helping you move forward. The energy that benefits you the most this month, we've got the chariot card. This is Cancerian energy and it is your energy. So the most beneficial energy for the month ahead is you. Believe in yourself, be confident, be bold, be strong. You've got some passions that run deep. You've got a lot to offer, a lot to give. And when you know what you want, you're ready for action and you move forward. Now, the chariot card is a card of destiny. So just like we have a lot of help, um, angel angelic help and spiritual help here, there's something here that's meant for you to experience. And when we talk about destiny, the stars are aligning for you in a wonderful way. And the chariot card brings you, number one, the confidence to know when to take a step back and allow, but also know when to take action and when to take those next steps forward. Because there's things lining up for you in your path um, that will result in success for you. So balance is the key. A little bit of healing energy is the key, right? We've got lots of healing coming in here for you guys. And I feel that you are getting prepared for something exciting, some passionate new connection that is meant for you. The chariot card is also a card of movement, a card of travel. So if you've been feeling um, as though you've been stuck in a rut for a while, that nothing's been happening, there may be a big shift um, that you experience um, in the month. I feel it's probably going to be a little bit after the eclipse energies have kind of dissipated a little bit. So probably around the middle of month, maybe after Mercury goes direct again. 
um, that gets a little bit easier for us. So uh, right around middle middle of the month or so, a little bit after, you probably feel yourself taking some initiative, taking some action, maybe just feeling a little bit lighter and brighter, but taking positive steps forward. The Chariot card is also one of travel. So perhaps some of you do have some travel plans or maybe you're going out on the town with some friends, um, something like possibly in a car, okay? And this can be really good for you, beneficial for you, puts you in a very high vibe state. And when we are in that high vibe state, we're embodying love and happiness and joy. We get more things. We attract more things to us that match that vibe. So there might be something very exciting for you. We've got the Page of Cups. Well, let me tell you, in a new love reading, we like to see the Page of Cups. That's excellent energy. We've got the Emperor bringing out some Aries energy there for you. And we've got the Five of Pentacles here also. All right. So with the Five of Pentacles here, I feel like um, you're empowered to say no. Okay. Um you don't have to say yes to every single connection um, that comes in for you. And you're going to know when to say no, when to say yes. But the Five of Pentacles can be a card of loss. And I feel this is part of what we're processing here through the month, previous disappointments and losses and heartaches. The Five of Pentacles is a reminder that there's help and opportunities and resources available for us. We just need to be open to accepting those. And if you are, then the magic can really happen. But sometimes we need to make a conscious effort to turn those things around, right? To recognize our true potential and see things for the potential that they have. With that, we've got the High Priestess coming out here as well. So with the High Priestess coming out, your intuition is very much um, on point, very much at an all-time high, and it's really going to help you um, to recognize what is real potential for a relationship and what is not, okay? Your, your knowledge and your wisdom from past experiences is very much going to play a key role for you in finding love, and it always does, but sometimes we ignore it. We ignore red flags because sometimes our um, human experience gets a little bit, oh, uh, kind of runs away, run, makes us run away with things a little bit too much, right? So sometimes we got a lot of passion, a lot of uh, chemistry with somebody. And even though we see red flags, we just can't help ourselves, right? We get drawn into that temptation. Okay, so your, your um, intuition very much is going to help you along that path and to make those decisions and to know when to say yes and to know when to say no, okay? But there is opportunities here. There's help and resources there, okay? We just need to expand our mind and you see this person here while well, she looks like someone who's divorced or left at the altar, right? And she's pining for something that has been lost, all right? And so this here with the healing energy that we do have coming in, the cleansing and the purging in a very intense manner, um, with this eclipse energy, I feel like you are being very protected and guided along this journey and that you are going to be shown the magic, okay? And they're helping you to heal, helping you to move forward. But remember, we did speak about past experiences, right? We let go of the energy, okay? We let go of that that's holding us back. We cut those energetic cords and then we acquire and we remember the lessons, the wisdom. And the high priestess is the keeper of secrets and mysteries is also keeper of the book of wisdom. So I think that spirit here is very much giving you the message that remember your past hurts and losses um, and the things that haven't worked out have made you stronger, have made you um, smarter, <laughs> okay, have filled you with, in with wisdom. And wisdom comes through challenging experiences more than it does with negative one with positive ones right um, because it's through pain and grief and sadness that we really do gain those life lessons so I think spirits just reminding you of that okay if there is anything that does come up from the past right that this is where you get your wisdom from and we should be thankful and grateful for that and celebrate that because this is your opportunity to really step into that personal power so that you can move forward but we do have the page of cups coming in here. I love the page of cups because number one, this is you. You maybe you're you maybe you are 
having a fantasy about someone or something. Maybe you're just dreaming about love. This is a very dreamy energy, um, very imaginative energy, okay? But the Page of Cups can sometimes bring about a little bit of a surprise. So there might be some unexpected event that uh, is occurring for you in the month of May. The Page of Cups can quite often bring in... Um, an offer of love and romance, or at least an invitation to go and do something fun and something interesting. Okay, feed your inner child a little bit here, but your intuition and your spiritual senses are very highlighted with the Page of Cups as well. So I think here that for some of you, you may already have somebody in your sights. Maybe you've even um, gone on a couple of dates with somebody. And if this is the case, maybe you're starting to daydream about them a little bit and imagine potential future with them. Okay, Or you're just feeling all the feels right? And you're feeling pretty good. It's new, it's fresh, and it's exciting. And hey, maybe you're a little bit curious about where this can lead you. I feel for others of you, you are very much in this energy where you are opening yourself up to love in a very positive way. You've got this sense of wonder about you, like I wonder what's out there. You're curious about, um, you know, what, what could possibly be out there. And maybe you're starting to explore your options with that page of cups. So a very wonderful, um, very, uh, usually a very kind of fun energy with that page of cups, but we do have the emperor here as well. And the emperor can certainly be a new person coming in, um, to your world here. Now it may be an Aries and maybe an Aries person or someone with Aries placement in their chart. Okay. But, um, it can also be somebody who knows what they want. Okay. They, know what they want. They have a plan to find it. Okay. But they're also a little bit flexible. It's maybe somebody that is divorced. They may or may not have children. Um, they may or may not have been married, but they're certainly, um, most likely single. They've had a few of their own experiences that have brought them wisdom of their own. Um, but this is somebody who takes charge. Um, they know what they want. They know how to get it. Okay. And you know, they are, very sure of themselves and very confident. The emperor, sometimes we dismiss the emperor a little bit because this may or may or may not be somebody older than you. Okay, certainly someone who's very mature on their outlook and love. But this could also be somebody with that page of cups energy there that likes to have fun and that has a light side to them. They're in touch with their inner child, even though on the outside, maybe they feel, maybe they may appear to be a little bit, um, a little bit uh, stoic we'll call it in their energy, right? So you just never know what's beneath the surface. You got to scratch the surface to see what's underneath. So you can maybe, you could very much potentially have um, a Sagittarian coming in, um, an Aries person coming in, or perhaps a feller, fellow Cancerian coming in there, okay? Or just people that embody these qualities. So let's get a little bit more information here about the Temperance card and see um, if this was a person, what kind of person would this potentially be other than um, other than the uh, wonderful energy of the Sagittarius. So we've got priest energy coming out there. Um, with femme fatale energy. All right, let's have a look at the chariot and get a couple of cards for that one. Thank you. And we're going to get a couple here for the emperor as well. Thank you. All right. So these are archetype cards. So potentially a little bit more details about these. All right, so we do have the priest energy coming in here with that temperance card. Shocking, okay. Um, facilitate, facilitates spiritual commitments and serves as a channel of spiritual energy, okay. Maybe also someone that can be a little bit seductive, all right. So perhaps somebody who is also very much in touch with their spiritual side, okay. We also have femme fatale energy coming in here as well. So this is somebody who may, um, you know, uh, be engaged in spiritual practice or at least in touch with their spiritual side, but also somebody who, um, you know, may be very, uh, how should we say, very irresistible. There's this chemical attraction with this person here as well, someone who is very sensual um, or sexy, however you want to say that, okay, but someone who is opening your heart, okay, someone who can really open your heart in a positive way, all right, they may also have a, a little bit of an attachment to some money there or focused on their money, okay? Um, a lot of people are right now. 
Okay, they may actually have a spiritual practice um, that they make money from. So maybe they are somebody who uh, does some work on the side in that uh, in that arena. Okay, or um, you know can uh, maybe that's someone that you go and see. Actually, you never know. All right, but there's someone who may actually make some money from their spiritual practice. So with the chariot card, we've got trickster energy here, and this can be somebody who um, is just a little bit unconventional. Um, someone who may be, um, you know, their light attributes here is somebody who is a little bit different than the norm, okay? Um, somebody who is rising above normal ways of doing things. So a little bit unexpected kind of energy when we do get this particular one. Okay. Um, they're not predictable. Um, they're a little bit free in their energy. They're not like, you know, they're not like a stuffed shirt. Um, so maybe they are somebody who dances to the beat of their own drum, very much just like that chariot would, right? Someone who's confident in their own skin. They know what they want and they go get it and they're going to do what it takes to get that. We also have a visionary coming in here as well, right? So again, they can maybe see the future where they have a vision of what they want and they go and get it, okay? So this person would have the capacity to envision what is not yet conceivable to others and, you know, they um, uh, can really state what it is they want and they don't care what anyone else says, they go and get it. Sometimes when we have this energy though, sometimes some people can be a little bit, um, how should we say, uh, a little bit uppity about it, right? We all have a shadow side. All your cards are in the upright. So I'm really focusing on the light attributes of these things rather than the shadow. Okay. But there's always a shadow to everything. We're all human, right? So even the most loving, caring person sometimes gets annoyed, right? Um, you know, along their journey, along their day. So it's going to be somebody who very much has their sights set on the future and they dance to the beat of their own drum, right? So they just do what it is they want and they don't need to listen to anybody. The Emperor card, we've got the Messiah archetype coming in here. So this is somebody who um, maybe is very helpful to other people, which is in keeping with Emperor energy because this is quite often someone with really good advice. Why? Because they've got wisdom. They've got that experience to give that, okay? Um, so this is somebody who may very much be in the energy of serving humanity and they're a little bit humble. Um, the Emperor sometimes comes out as very confident, very large and in charge, but they don't necessarily come across as arrogant. Um, sometimes that can be the shadow side of that, right? They can be a little bit like that. Okay. Um, we also have here with the slave energy. Um, this is really about surrender. Um, so they're open right now to um, experience. They're trusting the process. They're in the flow with this energy. Okay. Um, this is surrendering your power of choice to the divine with complete trust. Sometimes they falter on that journey. Sometimes they still have fears and doubts, but ultimately they are very much, um, you know, saying, okay, universe, you know what? Give me what I want. Right. So they may be manifesting you into their life as well. OK, so we got some exciting energy coming in there with some very interesting kind of people that may cross your path um, in some way, shape or form. OK, but the emperor, you know, I'm really kind of zoning in on that just a little bit only because you know the emperor would be somebody who isn't isn't afraid of commitment if that's what you're looking for or perhaps you're looking for somebody a little bit more unconventional um like that chariot energy with that cancerian person or maybe you're looking for you know maybe if you are very connected with your own spiritual side maybe you do want somebody that is um, living in that world right because that is a little bit different uh than you know than um normal everyday um you know life that people tend to live right because they see things differently and um they have a very open mind in that energy so that can be something that clicks with you too so your final messages here we do have new love okay this is a great opportunity and a great time for you to manifest new love into your life but also to be open to the possibilities of new love spirit really wants you to be um, uh, to be engaged in your love life and spirit really wants you to have what it is that you want, right? So new love on the horizon for you guys. Now we also have children here as well. So for some of you here, um, 
This can be a time when spirit says to you, tap into your inner child, right? Have some fun, get out there, raise your vibe. Okay, but you might also have children. And if you do have children, of course, they play a key role in your quest for love, right? Because you need to make sure that you not just are looking for somebody that's good for you, but also someone that you're comfortable with your children interacting and engaging with as well. Um, you may also be calling in somebody who has children, okay? Um, and uh, so Emperor Energy very well could. Um, the Sagi Energy and the Cancerian Energy, they may as well, okay? But children in some way, shape, or form may play a key role in your love life. But we also have spiritual growth coming in here as well. So this is wonderful. So this is you gaining new insights and clarity and wisdom. Okay, really connecting with your intuition, your higher senses, just like that high priestess card. You're open and you're accepting of new people, new ideas, new things. Um, and this is a time for you to really grow and blossom and shine. Okay, the spiritual growth also shows your connection with spirit to bring new love into your life. Okay, and it's very much in the flow, very open, very accepting, right? So we may have a little bit of work to do, okay, to kind of scrub the, the slate clean and that way you have room to accept new love in, all right? So I'm going to leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here that resonated with you on some level. If so, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment in the box down below. I thank you so much for watching and we're going to move on to Leo. Hello Leo, let's have a look and see what we've got coming in for you guys for the month ahead for your new love. Messages for Leo, please. What do we need to know for new love for our singles out there? Thank you. A couple more of these. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, look at that. Okay. So Spirit's really wanting you to take care of yourself here with this energy, okay? First off, we have compassion. You demonstrate the language of the heart by actively sharing and giving love. Yes. Okay. We all know the law of attraction, manifestation 101. The energy that you put out there is what bounces back to you multiplied. So embrace the energy of love, kindness, caring, compassion. And this is what you will receive back in return. Also with the compassion energy, be nice to yourself here, Leo. Be kind to yourself. Do something nice for yourself here as well. The compassion energy can really come to play, um, especially around that eclipse, right? Very intense energy and a very big um, opportunity to transform, to evolve, to let go, okay, so we can cleanse. And in that process there, we do need to embrace a little bit of, com a little bit of compassion, okay? Um, and like I said at the beginning of your reading, it's a good time to let go of all of the old, all of the blocks, all of the resistance, the doubts, the fears, everything. Embrace forgiveness in your heart so that you can be empowered and you can feel stronger and brighter so that you can move forward and leave all of the baggage at the door. You keep the wisdom and experiences, right? But we don't want the energy, okay? And be nice to yourself in that process because it's not an easy energy to cleanse and purge. And uh, yeah, you may have someone that comes back. Sometimes we do. Um, eclipses can really shake things up and be a little bit unpredictable. And we have this association with Scorpio, Mer Mercury retrograde, and all of these things can potentially bring someone back. So I feel like here that spirit wants you to know that even if somebody does come back, and your immediate response is, ooh, no, right? Be kind in your response. You will feel better. We have patience here as well. Now, no one likes to be told to be patient, do we? Okay, the patience energy here. Some of you have been very patient in your quest for love and spirits wanting you to know that you are almost there. Just a little bit more patience. We just need to scrub the slate clean. Have you ever wiped off chalk off a blackboard? You have that residue, okay? Spirits getting a wet sponge and completely getting rid of that wet residue for you, okay? But patience is necessary and it's a virtue, okay? Sometimes we have to learn a little bit of patience, okay? For others of you, I feel like here, that spirit's bringing you somebody and it's just a little bit more time okay so just keep an open heart keep an open mind you are able to let the universal energy of transformation move according to its own loving rhythm 
be in the flow people okay it's all about divine timing and don't forget when we're looking for love it's not just you and your energy you need that you need to be ready with it's also your person needs to be ready so depending on what stage the person is that spirits orchestrating and moving things around to bring into your life it's it matters where they are in their journey because you don't want them in before they are ready and you don't want to force something into existence, right? Because when you force something, we create more resistance. And we don't want that, right? We, no, no, no. We want to be in the flow. But in the meantime, show yourself some love. We've got self-love here. You realize that love of self is necessary to love another. Yes, it is. Okay, we need to love ourselves. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to do nice things for ourselves. Don't wait for someone else to do it. Buy yourself some flowers. Take yourself out to dinner. Go to a movie. Um, and go in and, you know, have some fun with your friends. Go out and meet new people um, without expectation of looking for love. And that's exactly when you're going to find it, right? When we release those expectations, then we are more in the flow. And that is where the universe can do its job a little bit easier. Wow. Okay. Uh, some of you may have cancer placements in your birth chart somewhere. Okay, or we're calling in a Cancerian person um, because, interesting, they have your exact same cards. Granted, these two here are in different positions. So very interesting, very interesting energy. But first, we need to prepare. The judgment card here is helping you release. Okay, there may be something that is hidden that comes to light or something that you discover. Okay, that may come um, into your consciousness. This is so that you can examine it, you can see the truth, you can shine a light on it, and then you can make a decision. Okay, R decide to let things go. Decide to cut those energetic cords. Decide to move forward, right? The decision is within you. We all have will willpower. You can choose to hold on to hate and shame and guilt and fears and doubts. You can choose to hold on to those, but I don't feel that you will. I feel that you're going to embrace the energy that's around you and really make positive steps forward. And by releasing all of that old energy, right, that you don't want to take with you, it's the past is past, it's done, it's done. You keep the wisdoms, you keep the lessons, and then you move forward lighter and brighter than you were before. The judgment card does help you forgive and heal. It is an empowering energy, and you have the assistance here of your angel spirits guides and especially Archangel Michael. Call on Archangel Michael to give you the courage, the power, the strength, and the confidence that you need to cut all of that old energy out and to help you see your way forward. All right. You may have some epiphany uh, that comes in for you here at some point as well. Now, yes, the judgment card can sometimes bring about second chances. Okay. And I feel like here in the energy that most people are in, I feel like the majority of second chances is going to be a second chance at love in general, okay? It doesn't have to be a specific person, just opening yourself up to love again. I also feel that a second chance may be reconnecting or bumping into someone that may have been a missed connection. So it can be like, you know, you may have had a few dates with somebody at some point and through circumstances beyond your control or theirs, maybe it just didn't work out. There may have been family issues. There may have been job issues. Um, maybe they had to, you know, maybe, maybe they moved away, right? Those kind of things. Um, it may be that the pandemic struck. Huh, wonderful, right? And you're like, hey, well, I had some great chemistry with this person and poof. Just like, a, just like the genie from the lamp, they're gone. You just never know what might happen. This, it, this energy that we've got going on in the last couple of months and still through May is very unpredictable. Um, and we've got a lot of surprises that can come up. So you just never know. You might um, reconnect with somebody that was a missed connection, almost like that fish that got away. And you're like, man, that had so much potential. Whatever happened to this person? Well, hey, you might figure that out. I do feel that if there is any past romantic interests that do come back um, into your life, I feel that for the majority of you, this will just be to close the chapter. 
because this eclipse is a south node eclipse as well. And this is us. The south node is what we're leaving behind. And we're moving forward to our north node, right? A clear sense of direction, just like on a compass, right? Always pointing north, always going forward. Okay, so the south is where we what we have left behind. And so I feel like if there is any romantic interest, um, I feel like this is really more just to close that chapter. Just to get that little bit of closure that maybe you need or maybe you're feeling a little bit stronger, more empowered for someone that keeps coming back into your life. Just to have that final line in the sand and say, nope, never going to happen. I wish you well in your life. Thank you very much. But I'm moving forward with mine. Okay, it's if it was going to work out, it would have worked out already. And, you know, so you might be in that energy there with anybody that may actually come back. Okay, this can just be a ch an opportunity for you to just be very empowered and just be like, no, right? No, no, you're not what I want. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward. I suggest you do the same. So, you know, so you may have that going on, but it's a very cleansing energy that's coming in there. The energy coming towards you, we do have the chariot card. Okay. So, um, number one, this is you feeling stronger, feeling more confident, feeling more empowered. You're getting everything in alignment and you're ready to move forward and take steps. Okay. The chariot card is one of success. Um, and it's because of your actions, because of the things that you have put in motion, okay? Um, but it is also a card of destiny. So again, because of things that you have already started and you have initiated, the universe is aligning people, places, and situations for you um, to help you make something happen, right? There's your The wheels of destiny are already in motion, okay? And so there's faded events that are coming in and eclipses do bring that in as well, okay? So there may be something in your future, in your journey, or even just um, manifesting in the month of May that these things are meant to happen, okay? It's part of your destiny, part of your path, right? And it does lead you forward and helps you move forward here also, okay? Now, for some of you here, that chariot card could also be a Cancerian person, coming into your um, manifesting and coming into your world. Okay, now this person may be somebody that can just help you on your journey a little bit, but I also feel this is a very passionate connection in this particular deck. The chariot card is one of ruling passion, drive, determination, and ambition, and some really great energy. So you may have um, a connection and an encounter with somebody who is just irresistible. Somebody who is just, wow, you feel the crackle, you feel the spark in the air, right? It makes your hair on your arms stand up, the hair on the back of your neck stand up. You get little goosebumps maybe if you're, um, depending on uh, on your skin tone, you may blush a beet red or perhaps it's like the blood draining out of your face and you're like, whoa, this is cool um, because it's somebody with that very powerful connection um, that you may have. It may be instantaneous and it may be so strong initially that it's like almost like two polar opposites of a magnet that actually drive each other apart, even though if you just flip one around, they attract each other. So sometimes when we do have these powerful connections um, that we make, sometimes the energy is so strong that it's like, uh, right? And it's really because it's like kind of a little bit scary, Okay. And, um, you know, but then it kind of like settles down and you're like, Oh, it's actually really kind of cool. But no matter how you slice it, that can be some very interesting energy. The energy benefiting you the most in the month ahead. We do have the temperance card here. Now this is Sagittarian energy. So there may absolutely be, um, a Sagittarian person that may play a key role in your love life in the next month. Um, this can be a potential love interest coming in. And this may even be you um, seeking out some spiritual guidance as well, okay? Because the temperance card can be somebody who is very spiritual in their energy. So maybe you get um, an astrology reading or maybe you get a tarot reading or something like that. Um, and this could, or maybe you already have and there's things that are starting to shift in your world. And you're like, oh my God, things are coming true, okay? But the temperance card can be um, a Sagittarian person. However, the temperance card is one that is very connected with our guardian angels, Okay, our spirit guides, and it is an energy that brings in calm and peace and patience and balance and healing into our world. It is a card of moderation, and so this can certainly be spirit reiterating to you that patience is the key on your path to finding love. Be ready to take action with the chariot card there, okay, but everything in moderation, one day at a time, 
be patient, but be open and be receptive. And you will know when the right time is right. And you will know when to take action in that energy. Okay. Um, but I do feel that there is some wonderful, peaceful, calming energy that is coming in here for you. And it's just what the doctor ordered. Okay. And it's really very much preparing you and aligning you to be open for those new connections if you don't already have them. Okay. Or maybe even get you in a slightly better energy for those of you who have made those connections already. So let's see what else we've got coming in here for you. We've got the hanged man. Well, that brings you patience, doesn't it? Um, we've got the seven of swords. There's someone coming back. Okay. And we've got the six of cups. So some of you do potentially have somebody coming back. Okay. But I feel like here, this is your opportunity to let them go. Um, because we do have this hanged man coming in here, right? So um, the hanged man, yes, it can bring us patience. It can also feel like a little bit of a stagnant energy. And I feel like that shifting for you for sure. Um, but the hanged man, there is our ability to take a step back to revisit things, to look at things that we may have overlooked, to reflect, okay, and to surrender, to release, and to let go, right? And this puts us more in the flow. This is where we get answers. This is where we get those epiphany moments, right? And this is where we get clarity. It's also where we see the big picture and see things from a different perspective, okay? So it's a very positive energy. But I feel like here the Seven of Swords can be somebody returning back in, right? Someone returning to the scene of the crime, so to speak. Okay. Um, and with the six of cups here as well, can possibly be somebody um, that does come back into your world. But again, I feel like this is the opportunity to let them go exactly what we were saying a little bit earlier. All right. So the hanged man can also be you, your energy, taking your time, okay, to think about what it is you want to have a look at those blocks and, and things that you may have and to really kind of gain that insight onto, okay, yes, this is what I'm really looking for. This is what I really am looking for that's good for my heart, my body, my mind, my soul. The Seven of Swords can be you um, maybe doing something in, in uh, behind the scenes because it can be a little bit of a secretive energy. It can be a little sneaky, sneaky energy there. And, you know, so maybe some of you, you're exploring your love options, but you might not be telling anyone about it. Okay, so you might be just kind of being a little bit secret about it. The Seven of Swords can also represent trust issues. So again, um, you know, this can be a time, especially Mercury retrograde, where you can't always trust everything that you see. Um, especially in, on the internet, right? Um, that kind of thing. So re remember just to protect your personal information. And if you are doing online dating and things like that, just, you know, before you can really verify who someone is, sometimes you have to meet them or you have to research them. So just be a little bit cautious, okay? Because you can't necessarily trust everything that you see, okay? Or every single person that you meet. The internet is full of illusion and not everything is always as it seems, right? So just be a little bit cautious, not trying to be doom and gloom or anything like that, right? But we do need to be aware of those kind of things. Some of you may also be working through some trust issues here as well, because the seven of swords can be that deceit and betrayal, um, things like that. So maybe you are letting go of past trust issues and you're being a little bit more open in your energy. Okay. But the six of cups is actually an energy of reflection. Um, it is one where we are in the moment, we're engaged in the present um, energy of today. We're reflecting a lot upon the past to see how far we've come to recognize the wisdom and experience that we've gained. Okay. The things that have been good, the things that have not been good, the mistakes that we've made because we do sometimes beat ourselves up and we're like, well, I shouldn't have done that. Maybe not, but that's how you learn, right? You learn from making mistakes. Okay. So embrace the gratitude that you have made them those mistakes and learn from them. Right. Um, you know, and sometimes we look at those things that I should have seen the red flag. Right. But in the Six of Cups energy, you're in the present, you're in the here and the now, you're reflecting on the past, making plans and seeing the potential for the future, but you're very engaged in this present moment and maybe even having a little bit of fun. Now, the Six of Cups can bring you in um, gifts and invitations, okay, but it is one where you're, where you're um, embracing your inner child there as well. Thank you. We've got the Page of Swords, so communication very much is the key for you, 
All right, and we've got the King of Wands coming in here as well. All right, <laughs> we've got the Nine of Cups at the bottom of the deck, your wishes, your goals, your dreams, okay? This is what's um, motivating you, influencing you, propelling you forward, and maybe even a little bit of a surprise that may come in for you, something that you've wanted, all right? But we do have the Page of Swords, so communication um, is very much the key, positive thinking, moving forward, being open to new people, new experiences, keeping an open mind. Um, here as well. Now the Page of Swords is uh, quite often does bring messages, news, communication, but is very tied to technology, to the internet. Okay, so some of you, you might be communicating with somebody via email, text message, that kind of thing. Um, maybe someone reaches out to you. Sometimes the Page of Swords is known as the lurker of the tarot, and this is just really where, um, not stalker, okay, lurker. All right, maybe someone's curious about you and they're looking up your social media. Um, you know, they're trying to research you. It could be someone from your past especially with that six of swords, right? So maybe someone like um, someone you used to work with or maybe someone from, you know, your college or high school days, right? That kind of thing. Maybe someone's just checking you out and wanting to look you up. Maybe they're just curious about you. Hey, I wonder, you know, uh, I wonder if Leo here, I wonder if, um, I wonder if they're married. I wonder where they're living, right? I wonder, you know, and the thing is, is that sometimes, you know, if you're thinking about somebody or maybe the universe is, uh, you know, um, really kind of uh, doing its job and, and having fun in the background there, um, you might actually be thinking of this person, right? Or maybe, you know, they're getting some sort of insights there on their end and all of a sudden you pop into their brain. Maybe they pick up an old yearbook or something, you know, or maybe it's an old work colleague, right? Someone who maybe you kind of always got along with really well and you kind of had some really great chemistry and, you know, maybe they just didn't work at your place anymore and you lost contact with them. So there could be someone checking you out on the internet. But again, remember emails, text messages, be very cautious with communication. Don't reveal, um, you know, more than you should just protect yourself, right? Protect your identity. Okay. In that, um, in that energy, there's just a lot of scammers about, right? So make sure that you verify people's information, right? Meet someone. Um, if you're meeting someone, you don't know who they are, right? Meet them in a coffee shop in a public place or something rather than inviting them to your house. Okay. Don't give away your birthday or, you know, your mother's maiden name and things like that. Just a little bit, just a little bit word to the wise, right? And sometimes we do get a little bit naive, um, when we are excited about things and when we are looking for love and we reveal too much. Okay. So, and again, not being doom and gloom. Okay. But it's just a really good practice. But we do have the King of Wands here. So yes, there could very much be a very exciting person coming into your world. Um, fire sign energy. Okay. So Leo, Sag, Aries. Okay. Any of those things. Um, oddly enough, the, uh, the Cancerian reading also did actually have an Emperor card coming in. So Aries energy. So again, there might be some sort of association there. You might actually have um, Cancer uh, placement somewhere in your birth chart as well. Um, so you might want to check out that reading because there's a lot of parallels to that. Okay, but the King of Wands is somebody who is large and in charge, someone who is very exciting to be around, someone who has a lot of energy. They're successful. They're very confident, very passionate about things. They love a sense of adventure. They like trying new things. They're very exciting to be around. Granted, sometimes maybe a little bit scary. It's like, whoa, it's a little much. Okay, um, but they could be a fellow fire sign, right? Um, that's coming in here. So they are very exciting, but they're very mature. The King of Wands is... Um, the Knight of Wands that has matured, okay? The Knight of Wands, not known for sticking around for a long time, okay? And not known for committing, but the King of Wands can absolutely do that, right? It's like, yeah, I had wild and younger days and I've sowed my oats, um, but now I'm ready to, you know, um, I'm ready to commit. I've matured since then, right? But they still have a little bit of a a little bit of a wild side to them, okay? So someone, I think they're probably very successful, maybe even an entrepreneur, all right? So let's get a couple more cards here for that chariot and see uh, what kind of person that this may be. Very interesting. Okay, uh, let's get the temperance card here. We'll get two of these. Just archetype cards, just getting a little bit more information, possibly sometimes even multiple people. And we will get the knight of uh, the king of wands there as well. <laughs> God complex. Well, they probably are incredibly, uh, incredibly, um, uh, sure of themselves. Okay. That's for sure. So very interesting with the chariot card, because if I remember correctly, I think that they also got this archetype for this particular card. So the light attribute of this one, this is somebody 
who is very much in the flow, somebody who is, um, they make choices, they make decisions, but they trust their intuition um, when they're doing that. So someone very much in tune with their spiritual side and with the powers of the universe, right? And again, if this is somebody that may be part of your destiny that the universe is orchestrating for you to meet, right? Then yes, they actually would be very much in tune with their spiritual side, okay? So this is somebody who is very, um, very powerful. They're very sure of themselves, but they are also very much open and in the flow um, at the same time, but they do have a lot of willpower, okay? Um, and a lot of ambition and drive determination. They might actually be the king of wands person, okay? Um, but this is also somebody who is very young at heart okay with the child eternal very young at heart um you know they're they like to have fun uh they take the serious things in life seriously um but they also do like to have fun um sometimes this person may be a little bit um a little bit uh childlike okay probably have a lot of fun with the youngins and that kind of thing so sometimes that might get a little bit out of hand but for the most part they're just very connected with their inner child um, in a very positive way um, with the temperance card very interesting we've got the alchemist and the temperance card is very much known for spiritual alchemy mixing fire and water together we get steam okay so some very good energy there um, transformation of base motives and goals into golden wisdom so again this the temperance card can be someone who's very spiritual Okay, um, but maybe someone who's still learning, okay, with this because we've got that shadow side there as well. So someone who is still learning, but we've also got the knight coming in here as well. And this is somebody who's filled with romance and love. Um, they're very honorable, okay, true to their word um, and very loyal, right? But they do have um, some love to give and some offers there may come on the table for you. Okay, sometimes they can get uh, just kind of like the Knight of Cubs energy. Sometimes they can get a little bit too caught up in love and romance to the point of like fantasy a little bit. Okay, um, or like delusions of love, right? Sometimes it's like too lovey-dovey, um, but you know what? It's not always a bad thing. Okay, um, we do have with the Knight of Wands, okay, some additional information. We've got God energy coming out here, okay, and really what this brings is a lot of confidence, okay. It's not that this person thinks that they're a God, okay, but they do have this power and this strength. Um, maybe they have the ability to create as well, okay, that power of creation. So again, they might be like an entrepreneur um, or they might just be able to um, really, they might be a very creative kind of person, very inspiring, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, but when we get this particular archetype here, this is, they recognize the forces within the internal forces that, um, help make them who they are and help them get things done, but also the external forces that help them as well. Sometimes the King of Wands, just like this God energy, some shadow and shadow side of that can be a little bit domineering little bit controlling okay um but again um you know all of these are in the upright for you and i feel this is very much more the light side of things rather than the dark side of things but they may they may not be adverse to taking risks taking chances we've got the gambler energy here for them as well um willingness to follow in their intuition even when they're doubted by other people so they do take their chances but they're trusting their intuition along their journey they're just like no I'm very sure of myself. I know that this is the right thing to do. This is the right direction to head in. And even though it doesn't necessarily make sense to other people, it might not make sense to them either. So they're very willing to um, go against the grain in this energy. Okay. Um, sometimes though, maybe they just, um, you know, sometimes though they uh, might want to rely a little bit too much on luck. Okay. Because maybe they've had those lucky breaks and they're just kind of sometimes um, rely on that. Okay, but I think this is a very exciting person, actually. Um, you know, so if you're, uh, but you know what, Leo, you understand the fire signs, right? So uh, again, it could be a fellow fellow Leo, someone in the spotlight, someone who, um, you know, is again very exciting to be around. They might even be life of the party, um, <laughs> so to speak. All right, so uh, anyway, so some very interesting possibilities that are coming in here for you guys. Let's get some last words out here for you and see what else we've got. We've got mature woman energy. We've got friendship energy. Yep, rely on a little help from your friends. We've got gifts, okay? Spirit is aligning people, places, and situations to bring you something wonderful. And we've got the dating energy. So 
be prepared to get out there and to meet new people. So the mature woman energy is very likely a female, okay, but it may also be a male, all right? Um, this is a mature person, somebody who is wanting a mature connection, someone who likes to have fun and they like to have adventure, but they are, you know, looking for something a little bit deeper than things like one night stand or, you know, just a month or two month long relationship. Okay. Someone who has very mature outlook on love and relationships and also maybe someone that has been very much hurt and burned in the past as well. This person may be a friend that can help you on your journey. Friendship is very important. This could possibly be an old friend. Okay, um, this may be someone who has some words of wisdom and advice for you. Okay, or maybe this is somebody that can also um, orchestrate a meeting as well. Okay, maybe like a friend of a friend. Um, we don't all like, uh, you know, the thought of like blind dates and stuff like that. But let's face it, the world has changed and how we meet people when we're looking for love has also changed. All right, so you never know there. But for some of you, there's an old friend coming back, someone that you used to know. Again, I don't entirely feel, um, unless it's just to get closure, I feel for the most part that if there is someone coming back, I feel that this would be just that misconnection or an old friend that may now turn into a romantic partnership. Sometimes that happens. Okay, um, it can be someone that you just got along with earlier, right? Maybe someone that you worked with. Okay, so there could be someone coming back in there for you. But we've got gifts coming in here as well, okay? And there's a little bit of a surprise that may come for you um, in the month ahead. The gifts energy is spiritual gifts, okay? And this is, number one, the gift of insight, the gift of wisdom, and the gift of your intuition. You're trusting all of your higher senses. But this is also spirit bringing you gifts, okay? Um, you might get the surprise or this is spirit saying, I am doing my best and I'm packaging something up for you that's going to be wonderful, okay? So just be aware and be ready. Trust your instincts. Trust your intuition. So we do have dating here as well. And uh, we've got full moon on there. Okay. So I do feel that, you know, you're going to be moving forward in a healthy way. Um, that I do feel that there's some dates on the horizon or that you're opening yourself up to the possibility of going out on some dates. Okay. And, you know, not everybody likes to play the dating game. But I think of it this way. Is if you've been single for a long time, okay, a couple of practice dates may just help you get back in the game, right? You get used to talking to a stranger and even if it's maybe it's a maybe it's a couple of drinks, maybe it's a cup of coffee, whatever it happens to be, okay? But getting out and actually being together with somebody um, can either lead to something wonderful or it gives you that little practice run, right? So, but we do have dating in the cards for you guys as well. Okay, so um, very interesting things opening up for you guys. A lot of potential here, but again, a big cleansing. Okay, wiping that blackboard clean so that you can um, write a new story. I'll leave that there for you, Leo. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment in the box down below as well. I hope you guys have a fantastic month and I will see you guys later. We're going to move on now to Virgo. Well, hello there, Virgo. Let's have a look and see what we've got coming out for you guys. New love for our Virgo singles, please. What do we need to know for the month ahead, please? Let's see what we've got. Oops, thank you very much. We have responsibility. We have humility. And one more, please. Thank you very much. And we've got tolerance. Okay, so it feels as though <laughs> you've been learning some lessons here, Virgo. All right, we have responsibility coming in here. You are aware of the power of your thoughts and the amount of love you express. Yes. Take responsibility for your energy, your thoughts, your actions, okay? Remember, whatever energy you put out there is what circulates back to you and usually multiplied, okay? So this is about recognizing what energy you are putting out there, okay? And if you find that you're putting out fear and anxieties and worries and doubts and you're focusing on all these things that you don't want out of love, then I feel like here you're going to be stepping into a different energy, taking a step back and adjusting that energy, right? Recognizing those things that are creating all of that resistance in your life, right? So recognize that the energy that you put out, boom, we want to get good energy back to you, right? We want love to flow back to you. We also have humility coming in here as well. You have been you have developed the loving awareness that you and everyone else are the same but on different paths. 
And yes, that is the truth, right? Um, you know, it's, it's an energy where we accept. Okay, we don't condone or anything like that, but we accept things, right? Is that, you know, people will ultimately follow their own happiness and their own bliss. And sometimes that does unfortunately involve um, hurting or leaving the people that they love, right? Or that love them, okay? And so when we recognize that, things do sometimes become a little bit easier, right? And if you've ever been in a situation where you've just had to do something, you've just had to follow your bliss, you've had to follow your own happiness, but maybe it does upset some other people or it's not in alignment with what other people want for you, but it's something you feel compelled to do or to try um, and to experience in your life. And, you know, it's the same with love right? Sometimes we just have goals and we have dreams and, you know, it just doesn't always involve other people. So, you know, if you've been hurt in the past, right, you've gotten into this energy or you will be stepping into this energy where you kind of understand and accept. And this just really makes your, um, your journey forward a little bit easier in that, right? It's a huge piece of wisdom that not everybody has the, um, uh, the f fortunate opportunity to understand and experience. We have tolerance coming in here as well. You appreciate other points of view because you sense the love in everyone. Okay, kumbaya here, uh, Virgo. Okay, you must have been doing some um, meditation or some spiritual work or a lot of healing. Okay, maybe you've been in a hermit mode for a while because when we develop this kind of energy, right, this is very calm, very accepting. Maybe you've been reciting the serenity prayer, right, giving you the wisdom to understand what you can control and, you know, the um, you know, understand the things you can't control and that wisdom that knows the difference between the two. I don't remember the exact words. Okay. But sometimes, you know, we, when we do step into that level of awareness, things get a little bit easier, right? It's like you've unlocked a mystery of life in there. Okay. Or you will, that's the energy coming in for you. So let's see what else we've got for you here, Virgo. The Empress. Wonderful. The sun, even better. Without the sun, nothing can grow. And the star, wow. Virgo, look at you. Um, this is some absolutely gorgeous energy for you. All right, so you are letting go of anything that is preventing your growth, preventing love from coming in, and preventing you from um, believing that you deserve love. Okay, so the Empress energy is a beautiful energy of things blossoming and growing in your life, the birth of new things, okay, the energy to expand and evolve and grow, and it's just an absolute beautiful energy bringing you all kinds of love and abundance and acceptance into your world, okay, and I think here that you're maybe on some level letting go of um, you know, letting go of needing other people to love you because in essence, you're going to love yourself if you don't already. And when we love ourselves, we embrace a wonderful high vibe energy and that is the energy that we put out. So self-love, self-care, buy yourself the flowers, take yourself out for dinner. <coughs> excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, go out. Wow. Excuse me. Go out. Um, you know, go out on a, a trip or a vacation, go have fun, do the things that make you happy. And when we release any other expectations or blocks, then we magically attract all kinds of wonderful opportunities to us. So um, it's a beautiful, beautiful energy there. You have the resources that you need. And I think you're stepping into um, this level of high vibe energy where you're just open and in the flow energy coming towards you is the sun, the happiest energy in the entire deck. Okay. The sun brings clarity. The sun brings creativity into the mix. It also brings success and abundance. So a lot of things, this is a time for you to blossom and shine and step into your true sense of self here, Virgo. And this is also a time where you can very much attract like bees to, um, bees to honey, right? Or bees to a flower, I guess, or a moth to a flame. Okay. You are attracting all kinds of people, situations, and things 
things that are very much in alignment with the vibe that you are putting out there. And the sun is just a beautiful, beautiful energy. You're filled with optimism, positivity. Okay, you're living your best life and it's just this happy, happy energy. You may be attracting somebody to you that is very creative. They may have children, maybe somebody that just has a positive attitude. Um, but I think you're just open to all of these possibilities and the blessings that are headed your way, considering we've got the star card here, which brings blessings anyway. So a double dose of blessings to you. The star card is the most beneficial energy for you in the month ahead. This is your blessings. And the star energy is all about looking at the future. You've left the past behind. Okay, all about looking at the potential. This brings in the power to harness all of the magic and the mystery of the universe and manifest something into your reality. Um, this is where you find enlightenment. This is where your intuition very much comes into play. And this is where you do find some balance and healing in your world here as well. All is right with the world when we get the star card. Okay, a lot of mystery, a lot of magic, a lot of blessings, a lot of wonderful high vibe energy that is surrounding you. Now the star energy may give you some inspiration, may restore hope and faith in finding love and welcoming people in. You may be attracting an Aquarian person to you, someone who's a very enlightened cat, um, someone who is um, very interesting to be around, maybe even a little weird. We all know that Aquarians are the weird ones out of the Zodiac, but weird in a good way, not weird in a scary way, okay? And they just, they're, they are very much kind and caring, um, but they are a little bit mystical in their energy there as well, okay? They have deep insights and deep wisdom when you get this Aquarian energy. But the star card does bring about miracles and blessings. It is the big yes card. So say yes to love, say yes to meeting new people. Okay, for some of you, there is something manifesting in your world in the month of May, something that you've wanted, something that you've been waiting for, and all these stars are aligning for you. Okay, um, the star card sometimes brings miracles and magic and opportunity right to your doorstep, right in the here and now. More often than not, it is a reminder to stay positive, to stay open, to stay in this high vibe energy because you may need to be a little bit more patient because the stars are aligning for you. Spirit is aligning people and situations and circumstances along your path that benefit you and that put you in alignment with meeting that love. So sometimes we do need to be a little bit more patient, but Spirit's like, don't worry about it. Leave it to me. Okay, I've got your back. All right, so some very exciting energy that's coming in here for you guys. Let's see what else we've got. What else does Virgo need to know for new love, please? Singles, new love, Virgo. The Seven of Cups. Woo, thank you. The King of Wands. And let's get another one. Thank you very much. And the Hierophant. Wow, talk about some wonderful energy. So the Seven of Cups, I feel like the world is your oyster. Abundance indeed. And the Seven of Cups quite often brings about um, and multiple opportunities. And it's like, oh my goodness, I've got all these options. What do I choose? All right. Um, so you might just be opening yourself up to possibilities of love and you're trying to make a decision. What do I want? Remember, always manifest and always focus on the things that you want. Okay, we don't want to spend too much time and energy on the things that you don't want because we don't want that to manifest, right? We want all the good to manifest in, right? Those qualities that you desire in a person, okay? The type of person that you want, okay? Or the type of relationship that you want to be in alignment with right now. So I feel like here that you're trying to make some decisions, you're trying to make some choices, but I also feel in the Seven of Cups that some of you may actually have a dream, a fantasy coming true because it is can, can be a card of daydream of using your imagination. And, you know, and again, that's actually part of manifestation, right? Because if you're, if you've got something, if you've got a vision, right, and you can imagine what it's like to feel the love of your life come walking in and, you know, you, you, you know, you touch them or you stand right beside them and you feel like this chemistry, right? And all of this, you feel the warm fuzzies, right? All this stuff. When you are in that energy and when you're imagining that, it's like a daydream that you can see as a movie playing through your head. You can feel all those feelings. Wow. Does that ever create a lot of very powerful energy that attaches to your manifestations and things happen a lot quicker 
when you're in that energy. But I also do feel that some of you have been dreaming about somebody and now it's time to choose, right? Do I choose love? Do I not choose love, right? So you might have some choices to make, but the seven of cups, just be a little bit aware. Sometimes we can be a little bit lost in that energy. Sometimes we can be a little bit confused um, or we procrastinate a little bit, right? We don't make a choice. We don't make those decisions because there is something there that's holding us back. So it's quite often where we play into our fears, right? And we get analysis paralysis a little bit, right? We spend too much time overthinking, overanalyzing instead of going with our heart. And this is where we, we, you know, get those blocks, right? The fears, the worries, like what if I choose wrong? You know, all of those things. But if we listen to our intuition, listen to our heart and choose what is right for you, in this moment in time, you will not go wrong, okay? So trust your ability to choose wisely, all right? But I think there's a world of opportunity opening up for you there. We do have the King of Wands coming here as well, so very exciting energy for you. Now, this can just be a person coming in. It doesn't have to be a king, but it's someone who is very much large and in charge, someone who's very exciting to be around, someone who loves a lot of passion, okay? Now, it does not necessarily have to be a fire sign, but it can be um, Leo, Sag, or Aries, right? It can be one of those people, or it can be just somebody who knows what they want, right? They know what they want. They like to have fun. They like to live their best life, but they're also very much in charge. They're successful. Um, and you know, they have this just kind of, they're very interesting. They might be a creative person. They might be somebody who's a little bit different than the norm. Okay. Um, but they may be somebody, um, that you have manifested in, the King of Wands is somebody that doesn't shy away from a commitment, unlike the younger version of themselves, which would be the Knight of Wands, right? So this could be somebody that used to sow some wild oats and used to have some wild and wonderful younger days, but someone who has settled down and they've matured, but they're still exciting and they're still full of passion and fire. But we also have the higher fat here as well. And this is Taurus energy. Now we're in Taurus season right? Um, and we have a Taurus new moon coming up uh, later on in May. I think it's the 19th. It might be the 20th, depending where you are. So this can be an opportunity here for you. Your best day for manifestation, okay, to really connect and harness that, that power of the universe may be on that Taurus new moon. So just a little bit of a side note there for you. But the Hierophant can also represent your acquired wisdom and using your wisdom and experiences to make the right decisions. But the Hierophant does bring in a Taurus person possibly into your realm as well. A lot of people watching, so we've got a couple of different options here for you. So we've got Aquarian, we've got potential fire sign. It doesn't have to be though, it can be just somebody who's just, who highlights some passion in you. Okay, and we also have Taurus coming in there as well. All right, so, um, you know, so this can be the Taurus person, um, maybe a little bit, um, maybe a little bit reserved, okay? Um, they might be focused on their career, on their money or things right now. We are in Taurus season, okay? But they're also making some changes and some positive shifts for themselves, okay? They may be manifesting you into their world, okay? But there's someone who's very practical and very down to earth. Um, they don't necessarily love change, Okay, even though, you know, change is good for them, right? So they might be someone that just kind of resists that kind of thing. They may be very in touch with their spiritual side, but they can also be that kind of person that learns their life lessons and then applies them accordingly, okay? So you may have that earth sign energy coming in. So let's get a few more cards here. Um, now the Hierophant can also just in general be a card of an energy of commitment, okay? Um, and also highlight some belief systems, right? So committed to beliefs, committed to family values and traditions, or is just somebody who is um, looking for a longer term, high level commitment. <clears throat> so let's grab Aquarian energy. That's way too many. Look at all those. Thank you very much. I only want like two or three, not like six. There we go. And the Taurus energy, please. Too many again. These cards are a little bit sticky and they're also getting a little bit chaotic for some reason. So let's see. Thank you. Whoa, see, chaotic flying across the table. That doesn't usually happen. All right, so let's have a look here. Okay, perfect. 
So with that Aquarian energy, we've got the knight in shining armor coming in here. The knight energy brings love, loyalty, romance um, into your world. Somebody with a sense of honor, okay? Someone who has some integrity to them, all right? And that star energy is in the upright, so we'll take the majority of the light attributes here, so all the positive aspects. But they also have a little bit of a shadow side like everybody does. Sometimes they can get a little bit too romantic, a little bit too carried away, okay? Or maybe they have fantasies about love and romance and something's a little bit up in their head. We also have the Midas slash Miser card here as well. The light, and light attributes are creation, success, the ability to turn something into nothing, um, and also being very generous and very sharing and caring, which is very Aquarian in that energy anyway. However... The darker side, the shadow side of that can be somebody who's a little bit miserly or they are afraid of losing what they have gained, right? And who isn't? With the King of Wands there, we've got the hedonist energy. Okay, someone very fat, very passionate, very creative. Um, somebody who enjoys the good things in life and somebody who um, is really wonderful to be around and very exciting to be around. However, sometimes they go a little bit overboard with all of that energy, again, as a lot of us can do. We also have the storyteller energy with this as well. So this is somebody who loves to experience life. They have a lot of stories. They have a lot of... Um, a lot of tales to tell, right? Some of them might be some tall tales, but some of them might be just some tales of exciting and ad adventures. That King of Wands used to be that Knight of Wands, right? It's all about going out, having fun, having experiences, right? So it could be someone who has very lived very large and has lived a really good life, and now they've got those stories to tell. Um, but like I said, the shadow side, sometimes maybe a little bit of tall tales, as sometimes people do tend to embellish things just a little bit. We've got with the Taurus energy here, we've got rescuer energy. Okay, this is somebody who provides strength and guidance to others, a la the Hierophant card, right? This is somebody who, um, you know, very much enjoys loving other people or helping or loving other people. And they do have love to give and they don't expect things in return. They're very generous in this energy, okay? Um, sometimes in their shadow side, when they're getting a bad mood, maybe they do sometimes rail at the fates that I've spent all this time helping these people and I don't get anything in return and of course um, sometimes that's just when the dark days kind of things right um, we also have here with the gambler energy as well okay this is somebody who is um, trusting their intuition even if it doesn't make sense even when other people doubt them right they know who they are they trust their intuition and their gut instincts implicitly okay and they don't uh even if something doesn't make sense to themselves or other people they still trust it they know that they're on the right path they're doing the right thing okay sometimes um sometimes <laughs> kind of in taurus energy um someone once described taurus as either they are um, they're like a rock. Either they're rolling down the hill and gaining momentum and picking up speed, or they're sitting there collecting moss. And so sometimes, you know, see a kind of feast or famine sometimes. And so with the gambler attribute, sometimes they just rather rely on a little bit of luck than um, a lot of hard work, right? But hey, who doesn't get in that energy every once in a while? But we also have the king energy here as well. And the light attributes someone enlightened, someone who is a leader, someone who helps and guides other people, and sometimes someone who takes care of others, right? And that's a great energy to be in. Um, sometimes they may rule with a slightly heavier hand, though, as well, right? Like they're very firm and clear in their convictions. Okay, but they ultimately have some very great um, energies and attributes there that may come in. Okay, so um, you may have these people coming in. You may even know who one or two of these people are already. So let's get a few last messages here for you guys. Dating queen. We've got mature woman. Children and family. Okay. So you may have some goals in mind in regards to your love life where you're looking for this mature connection. Um, you want to start a family or you already do have children in your family. Family may be important to you. And with the dating queen energy, you also want to go out and have some fun. Okay, but you want this mature connection. All right, but the dating queen energy can be your energy or it can be someone that you meet. Okay, somebody who... Um, 
uh, a lot of people would be very interested in, okay? Um, as your own energy, put yourself out there because this is your time to shine, okay? This is a time when you may have a lot of options as we already see with the Seven of Cups, okay? And keep your options open and don't be afraid to play the field a little bit. Go out there and do a little bit of dating. Um, that's how we get practice, right? Um, and it doesn't need to necessarily go anywhere, but this is showing that there's a lot of a lot of possibilities and a lot of suitors um, right now, okay? Um, and a lot of people that may have some potential there. So um, living your best life with that energy. But this may also be somebody that you meet who has gone on a lot of dates. They like to go out and have a good time. They like that. They like to go out for dinner. They like to have some drinks. You know, they like to have some fun. Um, but someone who maybe just hasn't quite found the one yet, a la maybe the King of Wands. Okay, so it's a great energy there. Very lighthearted. Very fun. We do have a mature woman coming in here as well. This is most likely a female that plays a key role in your love life in the month ahead. So it could be a friend that helps you out. Maybe you meet someone when you're out having fun with your friends. Okay, maybe this is somebody that you know that um, potentially wants to set you up with someone. They might actually orchestrate something in the background so it doesn't feel like a blind date or anything like this. Whoops, accidental meeting. Um, but the mature woman can also represent a person who has a very mature outlook on love and relationships and on what they want out of it, right? And they're very secure in who they are. Um, and, you know, they don't shy away from commitment, right? They're not going to play games with you in this energy, okay? Um, it may be a woman, maybe a female, but it may not be. It may be someone who is just in touch with their feminine side. They're open, receptive, creative, and they are loving in that energy. But we also do have children and family, okay? So again, you may be attracting someone in that already has um, children from a previous relationship or maybe somebody who wants to start a family, okay? And that's that mature connection there. For some of you, you may already have children and, you know, you these they certainly do play um, a key factor and, um, you know, in who you choose and what kind of relationship you choose, right? Because it, it, probably at some point they would interact with your children and, you know, but maybe this, you are wanting someone that can become part of your family, all right? So children and family might be very important to you and also to whoever you are attracting into your life here as well. So I'm going to leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here that resonated with you. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. I thank you for watching, and I will see you guys later. Bye.